Welcome to the latest episode of um, Hot Bananas, which is a history and context show with the Kingston School of Art. Uh, before I introduce our three special guests today, um, I have a little bit of a teaser, which is just um, a bit of a film to talk about um, what is Hot Bananas anyway. So um, let's just show you a bit of art and uh, bear with me. So let's go. Okay, <clears throat> volume on. And um, what is hot bananas? Ow, 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 ouch, 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 ouch. Ouch. <laughs> the Highway. Keep your eyes peeled for the Mandarin Hotel. We've got baked bananas, batted bananas, grilled bananas, and boiled. We've got them broiled. We've got them steamed, and we've got them grilled. Hot bananas. We roast them. We toast them. We boil them, and we fry them. Welcome Any way you to like hot them. bananas. Um, that was just uh, a bit of a film because we're talking about the theme of the body and other bodies. So um, back to um, our three guests. Today we are joined by um, what I shall call the bodybuilders. Of course, they have their own um, names and um, that will pop up in the screen shortly. But um, uh, let's just do the rollout and So <clears throat> we have today, uh, we are joined by Rachel, Al, and Holly Ann. Um, I have called them playfully the bodybuilders um, because that's the topic. Um, and of course, uh, one of their job titles is on display now. Um, that's just relevant to the creative and cultural industries. And um, these three guests will be talking about the body through a social object. So for the next hour, the format is this, a reminder that each guest will present their social object, their hot banana box, whatever is in it and whatever they'll show us. They'll get 10 minutes each to reveal their stories. And then um, after that, the three of them will have some banter about what they presented and any thoughts um, that arise as they're presented. And then maybe, maybe I will just prod the three of them to ask the question, so what? Like what happens if we add their ideas into a blender? Like will it come up with a challenge or a mix for making, right? Because at the end of the day, art and ideas are for pushing forward in terms of making. What can we create and, and put out there? Um, so we're about to find out what our three social objects are. And um, I will tag Rachel as our first um, presenter. And so over to you. Hello. Um, so I am on the um, list as a fashion designer. It's one thing I do. Um, but what I actually do is I use the body as a canvas for technology and for using the medium of textiles. So my object that I've brought is a piece of body adornment and it's my scissor tattoo. So I don't know how well you can see this, but it snakes around my arm. Um, and this, for me, is really representative of what I do. It's also uh, something that I got when I was a fashion designer. And I say when, because I was working in fashion design for three years, um, and it was not necessarily something that I, I realized, something that I wanted to do. So fashion is very modern. Fashion is a really sort of modern 20th century idea. What I do is I design clothing. Clothing has been with us forever. Clothing is completely essential. Everyone uses it, everyone needs it. Everyone has a connection to it. And so all the stuff that I do concerns clothing. So it's, it's art, but it's applied art. So tattoos could be seen as an analog form of uh, body modification, body augmentation. And from fashion, I've moved into technology. Um, and what I do is I use e-textiles, which are electronic textiles, which is literally putting augmented electronic textiles on the body. Um, and so for me, my scissor tattoo probably needs updating with maybe some like resistors or I don't know, some sort of active tattoos, maybe some conductive ink. Um, 
but tattoos are basically a way that we express ourselves through clothing so for me using clothing has always been about what it can convey you know I studied theatre I think that clothing and costume are very powerful um, because they literally I mean I literally wear like my work on my sleeve and I think that that counts for a lot of other people as well so for me how we augment the body is incredibly important because it not only empowers us but it also projects what we want to say out in the world now as a fashion designer I started when I was 30 um, and that was because I came from um, a background of having really severe eating disorders and so I wasn't ready until I was 30 to deal with clothes so the thing that's really super interesting about clothing specifically and how we adorn our bodies is as the artist as the person that creates these objects we have the responsibility of saying we are telling you how to be we're giving you ideas we're inspiring you like we're the people who are kind of very much responsible for how people see themselves and you, when you're presenting an object, when you're giving people pieces of clothing, when you're offering these, these works of art, these things that you've made, if you make something that's only for skinny people or only for tall people, or it only works for like a certain kind of body, then you are taking the responsibility of that, that thing. You're, you're, you're telling people how to be. So all of these things that we do, all of the work that we make, which concerns the body, comes with a huge responsibility. And for me, fashion wasn't really my jam because fashion's business. Like fashion's great, fashion is important, but fashion is a very, very modern version of clothing and fashion is really about business. So for me, I went back into art. And so I started making different kinds of clothing, which I was like, well, how do we tell stories? So now one of the things that I make, which is quite fun, is a pair of gloves, musical gloves. So it's a pair of gloves that are filled with sensors, Wi-Fi enabled, connected to your computer, and you can literally play music in the air. And for me, that's like a really important part of how you're giving people a tool to express themselves. So we've created these gloves. They don't really have uh, any rules and they can kind of do anything that you can make them do. So you're giving people a really complex musical instrument and going, Here's a, here's a brilliant tool to play with, but you have no maps. So you're giving it to someone and saying, go and create your own language. So that's quite a difficult thing. It's not very good business in the sense that if we gave people presets, they could be like, I'm just gonna go play the drums. We've got those, fine. But what you're saying is, well, you need to go and learn how to do it. And so I think that the way that we look at bodies, the way that we address bodies, and the way that we consider our, what we make and what we, give away into the world, you kind of need to give people the opportunity to have a little bit of feedback mm -hmm. and a little bit of input. Um, and you, oh, noises, sorry. Um, and you also need to give people the freedom to think about what they want. So I think that when we work with the body as art, it's not a one-way street. It's not like, I'm gonna tell you exactly what I think you should be doing. I think it's much more along the lines of, this is a conversation, I'm offering you something, and that's the beginnings of a process that everybody can be included in. So now when I make work, especially because I'm making weird technology, I try to make work that people can build on and feed back into. So I make tutorials, all of the weird stuff that I do, if I'm using a new material that doesn't really exist yet, or is being developed by the makers, the manufacturers, um, I'll publish everything online for free. So people can come, they can build on it. Like the best thing that happens is when I'll see like on Instagram, someone will tag me and they're like, oh, I built this thing based on Rachel's tutorial. And I'll see what they've done and be like, that's amazing. I want to continue this idea. Um, and so that's pretty much the basis of what I do now and how I design clothing. Um, and I didn't start my timer. So will someone just tell me when to shut up? That's okay. Um, if you want to show us more, then yeah. I wanted to tell you about one piece. So I'm, I'm, it's, yeah, it's quite hard when you start talking about something you're passionate about to realize like how much time has passed. So have I got another minute? Yes, yes, yes. absolutely. So I've got one piece called the Embody Suit, which is an art piece. It's made in the same way that I would make a piece of fashion. 
um, and it is basically a data delivery system. So it's a suit which has lots of little um, motors all over the body and they're modular so you can move them around. Um, it's also online if you want to build your own. And the idea is that you can take any piece of data from any place. So it could be the weather reports that we get delivered to our phones. It could be um, when an email arrives. It could be that you put a sensor somewhere. So if you put a sensor um, under the window at your house when you're away from home, when the sun shines, you'll get this, the, these little sensors can warm your back. So it's this idea that you can deliver data to your own body and it's not visible, it's not flashy, it's not an LED, it's not projecting anything, it's just delivering information to you. And when I was trying to explain this project to people, they were just like, I don't really get it. Because, you know, we're used to being given data, we're used to Facebook telling us how to respond. And this suit was a physical way of saying, how do we use all this technology, everything around us, and how do we control what we want it to be? And so the biggest question at the moment for me with bodies in art is how we make people understand that we have choices and we are potentially in control, but we have to decide to ask for those things or demand those things from the people who are making technology. And as, one, as a person who's one of those people, I would like to start that conversation. Great, thanks, Rachel. Um, love your stuff, I'm happy that you're here. Um, I can see that Holly and Al have like light bulbs too. So um, we'll, we will kind of store that and put that in a lovely packed box um, for the next few minutes. And so I'll tag it next to Al. Um, let's have your point of view on this theme. Am I talking about Rachel's one or am I going on my delivering my? That's right. Cool. Yeah. Um, so my, my object is this character here which some will know as a dear old friend, Anubis. Um, but I'm gonna give a bit more of a background as to why um, I chose that. And then particularly in, in relation to um, why I think it's relevant to this topic of body and our bodies. Um, so when I was 20 years old, so 15, 15 years ago, um, I was going through a pretty tough time. Um, my mother had just passed away um, and I found myself in a bit of a rut and a bit of confusion of who I was and why the body of my mother wasn't there anymore. Um, that person that's been my rock, my shield throughout my life has suddenly got snatched from me. Um, and not understanding myself or my relationship between my body or my mind created this turbulence, this deep unsettling. Um, and essentially it ended up me falling into psychosis and trying to take my own life. Um, thankfully I wasn't successful, um, but when it happened and something really curious took place and I thought I was dead. I saw my body being put in an ambulance from 10, 15 feet, um, looking down, laughing to myself, thinking silly humans think that they've killed me. Um, only then to wake up in a hospital bed, being really confused as to what's going on when I thought that I'm not the body, I've trans transcended the body or whatever happened, only to wake up back in a body and still have that level of confusion. Um, and then I found it ever since I've been on this curious journey, trying to understand what is the relationship between the body? Like at what point did I lose my grounding or my sense of identification with myself, be it mentally or physically? And where is the unity between those polarities? Um, so naturally I went on a, a journey of self inquiry. Um, and I really find it interesting because, you know, different traditions will speak of different bodies that we have, you know, whereas in the West, we're not even taught that we think, you know, if I say to you, do you, how do you think up ideas? You'll probably say yes. If I said to you, do you think, or do you hear voices in your head? You'll probably straight away think you're a nutter. Um, that's the kind of, you know, it's a bit of a taboo, but we all have voices on our head and we all think. Um, 
And I really loved the idea of different bodies because whether it's comfort for a fool, but the idea that I had a physical body, great. There's an emotional body, one that's related to that stores all my emotions and all of these feelings. I have a mental body, one that might be related to air and, you know, it kind of exists somewhere. Um, and then I have what one might say, an energy body that somehow gives life to all of this. And it's that vehicle that um, allows this experience to happen, this very complex um, experience we call life. Um, and through this exploration of different bodies, it kind of, there comes a point of separation and identification. You kind of go, oh, I really like the mental body because I'm quite intellectual, or um, I love the emotional body because I'm a mystic and I like to you know, think about God and get all mystical and stuff. Or, you know, I really like running, so I'm just gonna identify with the physical body just to get those chemicals going and get a sweat going and I feel pumped up. Um, but really it's that balance between all of those bodies. Um, and if we do have those bodies, how do we work with each of those bodies and different parts of those bodies to refine them, to, to liberate ourselves from the, the shackles and chains that one might have from maybe overthinking or being too emotional or being physically lazy? Um, and how do we go and journey between these different, different bodies? And I kind of came, I mean, perhaps a little bit obsessed with this idea. Um, and so I simplified it simply to the heart um, being the medium point between what we might say is the upper and the lower realms, be the physical, the mental, the heart's kind of an, a happy medium for me. Um, and hence this idea of Anubis, because Anubis was an embalmer, right? So he was seen as this mediator between the two worlds. You know, he could go between the heavens and hell or beyond life and death and he could go between them and he could take other souls on that journey because he had experienced this otherworldliness or the dark side and had seen the dark side and realized that it's temporary and actually we can come forth into day because of course when we think of Egypt we know they have this book of the dead which is a mistitle it's actually coming forth by day so this idea that was he, was he embalming hearts to ensure their life after death? Probably in one sense, but I think they didn't really believe in death. And they believe by working on the body, they can create a new body, one that is immortal, or that Christ body in Christianity, or the rainbow body of the Tibetans. Um, there's many different names. Um, but I found it very curious because, you know, he, he's known later as kind of um, Hermes as well, or the, the Greek god um, or Roman god Mercury, who's kind of seen with, you know, wings on his head or wings on his feet. And he can go between these different worlds and kind of be like airy fairy and just free and liberated. And for me, I think it's that spirit of that body that is not fixed or too identified with any of the bodies but has that mercurial spirit to go between the worlds or between the different places and seek inspiration from here or inspiration there. And essentially that's what we all do, knowingly or unknowingly. And I find Anubis is interesting because he maybe found a method to transcend these different bodies and to create this, this body that I perhaps experienced or didn't when I saw my physical body being put in an ambulance, because as it's taught, that's a thing. They call it the separation or an alchemy, you know, that, that's part of the work, that's part of the journey. So you, you realize you are more than just the physical body. Um, so Anubis, of course, he prepared people for this journey to create your, your horus, your body of light. Um, and he did this in a very particular way, you know, with the four different organs or the four canopic jars to create and regenerate and bring about this life principle that animates everything. And I find that interesting because what we call psychosis, psyche coming from the Greek meaning soul and osis meaning abnormal. So it's kind of like if you go through 
psychosis, you're, you're abnormal. <laughs> you're an abnormal soul that's had a strange experience that not many people do. You're a bit of a weird one now, you know, all right, mate. Um, don't, can't really relate to you, um, which is partly true. Um, but interestingly, the term abnormal, ab in Egyptian is the heart. So actually kind of normalizing things by just dedicating yourself to your heart. Um, and where does that journey begin and where does it end if actually we're there is just this now and it's eternal um, and how do we regenerate ourselves and what use does any of this actually have to our lives you know um rachel mentioned about you know using technology and mixing it and things like that it's, it's very the same thing it's being able to go between worlds or different using different bodies made up of different compositions beautifully and you know as an artist having that freedom to use these materials is the gift, you know? Um, it is that principle of life that transcends everything. I don't know if I'm uh, coming up to my time. Good. Um, I, I, I always love these segments because each um, presentation has this pact of just um, information and um, we'll get to that part. So for now, let's just tag on Holly Ann for her third piece. And um, to, to those who are watching this, I have had no prior knowledge necessarily of what um, each guest will present. And this is the gift. It's like a history improv of three different offers um, towards um, the, the theme of the body and other bodies. So over to you, Holly Ann. Hi, yeah, I'm Holly Ann. My artist name is Collageism because I'm a collage artist. Uh, so the object that I bought is my hand-mounted GoPro. Um, so I'm a, also a <laughs> video performance artist and um, I use this to, um, so it has, uh, and it, um, it has the view of my fingernails <laughs> in it. So I use this camera um, as, sort of like a diary so it's making video collages um, of my experience in life so yeah I started off making analog collage using uh, the face magazine years ago and um, yeah I sort of I'm, I make portraits and uh, I got to the point where like you'll see in the background there there's a portrait um, I got to the point where I'm you know I mean I'm describing emotions through my collages, through my portraits. Um, and then I thought I could use a camera to um, document my life. Uh, so hence this, um, and then edit it into sort of bite-sized videos, which become like video collages. I sample things um, from the internet, from, social media from you know conversations that I might hear um, when I'm on the tube um, and then I sort of combine it all to create um, yeah like a video diary and yeah I also use the camera for pop-up performances so I'll just I don't know be in a gallery a museum or something and then I will start interacting and it gives me like a sort of way I can like interact with people that are there and also um, to um, document my experience and then I bring it home and I combine it with sound, poetry, um, yeah and uh, I call myself Holly Ann Go Prophet um, which is a play on the GoPro. Um, yeah, so it's sort of my anecdotes on life. Um, can I share a video with you? Uh, so, absolutely. Share screen. Have you got that? You can see it. Yeah. If someone came up to you and gave you a book and you realized it was a book about your life, would you read it to the end? Are you today's day? Because you are my 10 out of 10. Not today, Satan. Not today. 
I wonder how can I become a hologram? I want to be immortalized inside the forever happiness hologram. Collagism inside the forever happiness hologram. You are magic. You are wild. You are free. You are a shining diamond. If I focus on black holes, is that negative? What is the origin of the entropy and temperature of black holes? Perhaps if I throw all of my negative emotions into a black hole that would be a positive way to look at them slash. When they call you crazy just remember that great ideas don't come from average minds. Life is too short for regrets. So love the people who treat you right, forgive the ones who don't and believe that everything happens for a reason. If you get a chance, take it. If it changes your life, let it. Nobody said it would be easy, they just promised it would be worth it. Yeah, so that was just an example of one of my videos. How do I go back to, how do I stop sharing the screen? Uh, yeah, there you go. <laughs> um, yeah, so uh, currently I'm studying Kundalini yoga um, teacher training. And um, so I'm really interested in, yeah, the intersection of performance and spirituality with technology. That's my current investigation. So <laughs> Yeah, um, but yeah, this all combines with collage, which I then, you know, take the videos and um, make them into these video collages. Um, yeah, the last project that I worked with, I actually found a performer. I'd been thinking about it for a long time, um, but I hadn't met the right person. And I sort of thought, well, I wanted someone who would actually start a relationship with me and allow me to wear the GoPro um, whilst we were getting to know each other, exploring each other's bodies, um, you know, basically document the whole thing. So uh, yeah, I did meet this person. Finally, I was like, I know. And I suggested to it, uh, it suggested the idea to him basically on our second meeting. He was totally into it. Um, I started then and there. And um, yeah, that video is probably the most personal, um, it, it took a massive leap of faith, I guess, for me to be wearing the camera. And, and then you get into this sort of line of what is um, reality. Um, I wanted it to be as truthful as possible, of course, and he was totally open to that too. But um, yeah, every time you edit something, it's very difficult to really convey the full truth but um yeah so that's um that was my last piece that i've that i've done um yeah and i guess i'm using the body um as my instrument because it's my it's it's my main option i guess um yeah uh, yeah so that's my my work is that <laughs> Thank you. Uh, thank you, Holly Ann. Um, again, I'm, I'm laughing as I, I'm, I'm kind of scribbling notes here as well from each of the stories. Um, because this is the joy of it. It's just allowing three um, individuals to be themselves and talk about their context. Um, and, and the theme is just an excuse for you to reveal um, those histories. Mm. So I'll now kind of let um, the three of you let loose of like, ooh, kind of anything that kind of sparked inside your heads there. And so over to the three of you. Yeah, I'm really interested, Rachel, in your um, in your your suit that you're making. Um, what is I, I didn't quite understand what the the manifestation of the suit is. Does it does it animate or does it do something to a compute feed into a computer or what's the it delivers sensations on your body. Oh, so, okay. Yeah, so it's it's currently got little motors in it and we were looking at how you can also give heat and cold, but like from a technological perspective, that's quite complex. And so we were trying to make it in a way that people could copy it and make their own. So we'd start off like doing that workshop so you can make like a necklace where you could kind of like send each other signals. Um, 
but it's this idea that you're delivering information to your body because i think what a lot of what we do is we always project outwards and we're taught that technology is like how do i show my mood with leds and like not yes. into that you know i like the idea that technology can serve us and deliver things to us and we should be able to choose what that is um yeah it's really interesting. I remember a few years ago, about three, four years ago, I was down at Imperial College um, and there was different students doing pitches. And one of them come up with this um, wearable, which you would place on your tongue and it would send, I, I say shocks, because um, I don't know much about electronics, but it would send pulses to different parts of your tongue to recreate flavours. So they could digitally <laughs> and create different yeah. flavours parts of the tongue and I just found that fascinating like what you said about you know we essentially we do experience everything from the inside like we have this idea that we experience things from the outside but actually like we make sense of everything from the inside and this idea like you yeah. like kind of programming do you want to taste this do you want to feel this it's kind of you know we are we, we are our own instruments that can be played um or manipulated unfortunately it's kind of like um, yeah yeah manipulated is such an important point now i think as well right because like loads of the stuff that i'm interested in at the moment is like you fill in the gaps so like if you read and you sort of read like half, we know we kind of know that you read like half the text and you sort of fill in the gaps mm -hmm. and that idea of like those which little bits do you present to people so that they can fill in the gaps because we all ha we all see things so completely differently yeah. Do you know what I mean? I think that that's like that's a really amazing thing even when you're presenting work like you don't know what other people are going to get from it well, it's um, like the other person is you, you know, so it's like, <laughs> it's like everyone, everyone sort of, you're projecting on them what you think about them or the art piece, what it is, like what you think that's about. It's, um, yeah, I love that saying, the other person is you. I really want to see your video. That's like proper badass. Like that's really a daring, that's such a daring thing to give someone that lens. Like all of the stuff we do, like we filter it. And I think that, we've each kind of really interestingly the thing that was really nice is that we, i was like oh it's meant a bit personal like but we've each had these like very personal reference points for our art which i think is a really nice thing between three people talking but like that is pretty hardcore badass like i'm well impressed i want to see like seeing <laughs> really giving windows into your brain is quite a mad thing to do isn't it yeah. it's, very, it's, <laughs> it's very yeah i mean i had to find a performance artist for that like it, uh, you know, I, I put it out there on an app for a while. There's an app called Field, um, which is like sort of, I guess it's a sex-based app where you can, um, you know, say your preferences. And I put on there, like, I'm a performance artist. This is what I'm looking for. But yeah, basically no one was into it. I think it took me about three years to meet the right person. And then just like with everything in life, you know, straight, like instantly, oh my goodness, this this guy is just going to be up for it. Yeah, it was, it was a real adventure of the, <laughs> of the body, mind and soul. <laughs> yeah, um, uh, so I'm going to just like do a stitch for the, the preview. It's incredible um, that uh, different contexts and, and yet, right? Um, so for, for those listening, I didn't really say I, I didn't give a constraint. I didn't say like, oh, make it personal, but the theme, right? That you, it, it is your embodied experience and, and the, the honesty of saying that, you know, here's a piece of me. I love that Windows said windows into your brain, which is what everyone's doing right now. We're all it's like brain surgeries, you know, like with, with these like little square slices of us. Um, but What's fascinating with the, the way that the three of you have the, the commonality, you presented something that is handheld, right? So it was just funny that I, I'm noticing like Rachel's on her sleeve, um, Al physically showing something with his hand, a three-dimensional object. And then, oh yeah, and then like, oh, here is my hand with a technology. So I'm seeing those, those threads, the common threads of yeah, the um, the idea of a collage is cut out, like little cutouts and assembly and Rachel, like what is being cut and stitched together. And then with Al, uh, the, the notion of like, um, again, like uh, with, with Anubis, like an Egyptian context that people maybe ha don't anticipate anymore. 
right? So that the idea of bodies maybe is more visual. And, and then what you uh, have alluded to is there's more to the optics going on. Um, so I'm just like throwing it in there, just like uh, what synchron like synchronicity that the three of you <laughs> having those common threads. It was interesting when you gave us the topic, the first thing that comes to my head, um, and I'll, I'll just do it because I'd like, I'm, I'm just curious. Like if everybody just rubs their hands for like, until you feel the heat. And then when you feel the heat, keep going. You feel heat. <laughs> and then put your hands together. So your palms are facing each other. Well, together like this. And can you feel the bubble between them? Mm. <laughs> my first thing is going to be this is my object. Oh, <laughs> you can feel it. And when we, when we talk about creating this body of light or this energy body, it's not, we, we see it like depicted as gold, like in Egypt and other places or Christ and stuff, but we don't perceive it as something that's not actually something that you can see, you can, but you can feel it, you can sense it. And it's kind of, it embodies us, we're embodied by it. And through the use of generating heat, all we're doing is we're making it more material, essentially. That's what we're doing. So we're bringing our awareness to it. And I just find that interesting. And when we think about bodies and, you know, what's your body, what's my body, what's the technology, what's not, ultimately it's one body because it's all this one thing. It's just how sensitive our awareness is of that nothingness or that thing that's binding us. Um, something that still makes me very curious. And um, I find it really, like, Interesting as well around Rachel's idea of like the scissors and um, like the expression through tattoos. Um, one, because like symbology has like, you know, some people say that it's the key to everything because it's, you know, it opens up your own dimensions of your own mind um, because it's not, you know, you could say it's scissors because maybe you was cutting material. Um, but then you don't just have scissors, you have the hand that's holding it, you know. Um, I always remember like being taught, you know, the scalpel or the scissors in this case is kind of like your your intellect but then what about the hand that's holding the scissors um mm. kind of made this beautiful uniform like this unity between like what you're passionate about um, and you're wearing it on your sleeve and then of course like i knew this is like you know to, all to do with the heart um so it's like you know people say oh i'm wearing my heart on my sleeve and it's kind of like you've got your passion right there <laughs> Yeah. So like that is, you know, what is the heart? Like, what is that thing that you're you're putting across? And then, even with um, like collages, you know, it's you, you're taking all of these separate things, all these different organs or elements, and then you're bringing them back into one thing to express something from yourself. So it's this beautiful idea of this whole kind of idea of separation, coagulation of different bodies, and using working out what is that thing that we can't really see perceive only if we do something that enables us to transcend and see things from another view and stick yeah. a camera on and it's just raw and raw flesh like the raw elements like you know nothing nice nothing pretty something very pretty something very nice very beautiful in that organicness like um fascinating and then one last thing just because it happened just before and it completely just tripped me it's like I was talking to someone, I was a bit fed up yesterday and I was driving, I was like, how am I going to do this talk? What am I going to talk about? And I was sitting there at the traffic lights, looking out the window. And then I found, I was like, just look at the trees, look at the branches, feel the senses. Actually, this is pretty cool. And then this morning, I was talking to a guy, I said, we just don't take, you know, aware of the most basic senses that we have, like feeling, touching, seeing. I said, but if I put a VR headset on your head and you wore it, and you experienced all of these things, you would be like, wow, this looks so real. Like, feel this touch and stuff like that. We would be amazed. So it's like, if technology can recreate that, like, it's already there, but it's kind of like, you know, some people, like when I do teaching with the kids and stuff, they're like, oh no, I don't want to use technology and stuff like that. I'm like, well, you've got it. Like, so, you know, it's a medium for expression. And um, so, I, you know, it's, ugh. There's, there's lots well, yeah, and, I, and so that's really important. Okay, so what you just said, because when you were sort of talking about Anubis, I was like, 
I was obsessed with Egyptology when I was a kid. Like my first tattoo, because loads of tattoos of, of this human, um, mm. is an ankh, is the, is, is the Egyptian ankh, right? And I got it in my belly when I was 15, bit naughty, whatever, it was the 90s. But um, the, these symbologies are super cool and like we need new ones. Like we need ones that go with our technology. We need ones to go with our world. I feel like they're a bit missing. Um, and that's kind of like what I'm interested in doing. So I felt like you were telling this story that I was like really connected to because I really love that that's those stories. And then I'm like, oh, my story's like need a bit of work, you know? And then the stuff that Holly Ann's doing is like you, the expression of like your like symbolism is so raw and so immediate. That's really representative of like what kind of symbolism we need now. It's just how you tell the stories, you know? I think there's this really nice like common thread that we're all completely different, but I saw uh, that's what I saw. Yeah. <clears throat> Yeah, um, no, it's like, thank you, like, the three of you. So I will um, share my screen to kind of remind everyone, um, including us, of like what we've got in the, in, in the, in the cabinet, <laughs> the, the kind of curiosities. It's just so for contemplation, right? What happens, like, um, I, 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 you know, I, I'd love to have Rachel's actual um, tattoo here, but the, the, the scissors on the skin, um, a statue of Anubis, um, the, the notion of attachment, which I think is just beautiful because um, Holly Ann, like you had no idea about um, uh, Rachel's gloves, right? And then here no, you- No, I didn't, no, which <laughs> sounds wonderful. I'm like, oh, I, need to, I need to play with these immediately. That's, that's um, that would be really cool. We should have a conversation about that actually. Yeah, <laughs> love to. But also just that the three of you intuitively or just the magic of it, you used your hands, right? <laughs> Say, here's my arm, here's um, an object, but you can only hold that object up with these. And then it's the same, of course, you, you could have just um, presented, oh, here's a camera separate, but you were wearing it. So I just thought that was just incredible that, um, uh, that the idea of, yeah, that using, because even a sculpture is a technology, right? It objects, externalized objects, and now it's a part of us. Um, so if you're a student, I don't know, what happens in the blender? <laughs> when we put scissors, Anubis, and camera, is a brief, is uh, uh, what possibilities, um, is anyone watching making sense of this? But also just for the three of us, um, for three of you and four of us as we're here, um, yeah, the, the connections um, that, that happens is just like really interesting. Um, so yeah, just like really grateful that um, you've presented your stories and uh, yeah, I, think, I don't know, I'll just like leave it to you just to say thanks really. Just like just some fascinating work going on. Thank you for inviting us, this is cool. Yeah, thank you. Um, Good to meet everyone. Yeah, so we, we have time left. How do I, oh, yeah, stop share. <laughs> there you go, back to the screen. Um, yeah, so I'm gonna made more notes um, and, and the words that you use, like instruments, right? That um, the body is an instrument, but we use instruments. Um, uh, Al walking us through the, the layers, the different cuts of the body, like physical, mental, emotional, mystical, et cetera, fashionable. Um, and um, one, one of the things that I also want to mention is that um, uh, the commonalities here was just that, um, I don't know what Rachel thinks about this, but with Al presented an object that is a hybrid of an animal head and a human body, right? The, the, this hybrid sense and um, Holly Ann with your collage, your kind of making new bodies, like body parts, like some of your colleges have human body parts, but then there's mixed with a cat head and, and whatnot. Yes. So yeah, this like, a, you know, um, with Rachel's point, the responsibility of what we make, right? What we, we represent. And I think you, Rachel, your point was which little bits you choose, I think it's just quite nice. Um, and that I think for, for creative minds, whatever level or student. Rachel mentioned something about that there's no maps, that you create your own language and that sometimes, and, and, and that, you know, you need to learn how to do it, that it's not about what's the pretext. Um, so just like lots of, um, I think the, 
the literal advice, I think, Rachel, from what you point from your craft is really a good reminder for all of us makers or creative thinkers and makers. This, this notion of which little bits do we put together, I think. And the responsibility, the responsibility, I believe. Um, um, it was just really refreshing because you're right that, you know, Rachel acknowledging the fashion as a business and um, how do the young minds deal with what's available right now? Like, what do they do about it? Cool. So if, um, if you have any other last thoughts or imparting messages, um, we still have time. Okay, um, we can just like wrap that up, but um, lots of complex thoughts. Uh, yeah, so all three of you, performance, spirituality, technology, this really fascinating um, mix of thinking about the body and bodies and really fresh. So thank you, um, a reminder for guests. Uh, thank you to Rachel, thank you Holly Ann, thank you Al. Um, I'm uh, Rena, you're, you're kind of one of the humble lecturers <laughs> for the Kingston School of Art of the Creative and Cultural Industries. And that is Hot Bananas. So um, join us for the next episode um, next week where we'll be talking about virtues and vices and what that means, sins, guilty pleasures, um, hope, whatever. Um, so until then, uh, uh, thank you for um, being here, uh, both three of you, and then to anyone else that's listening, um, explore um, what next. So uh, bye for me. Um, thank you. And we have some bonus content for you today. Uh, Thanks to our guest lecturer, Renee Von Sutherland, who is an Australian born artist who's currently living and working in Essex. Um, as an artist, she uses film, performance, and expanded cinema to work with the notion of the gaze and its sculpting potential on gender identity. Uh, we have an eight minute video um, or film that she has produced, and uh, we hope that you enjoy it so as a bit of an extra treat um, on the subject of um, or the theme of the body and other bodies. Enjoy. In Europe, land privatization began late in the 15th century alongside colonial expansion. It took different forms, the evictions of tenants, rent hikes, increased taxation, all leading to the sale of lands. In England, land privatization was mostly accomplished through enclosures, a technical term that was in fact a set of strategies used by English lords and rich farmers to eliminate communal land and open field systems, also known as commons. Villagers owned strips of land in unfenced fields and these commons were sites of collective decision-making and collaboration, where peasant solidarity could thrive. The social function of the commons was especially important for women, who, having less social power, were extremely unlikely to have land in their own names and were dependent on this space for their subsistence, autonomy, and sociality. Microbiomes inhabit our bodies, from the surface of our skin to our gallbladder, but 99% of them reside in the gut. The human gut provides the environment for more species and families of creatures than any other landscape and is unique as a fingerprint. An individual gut contains approximately 100 trillion bacteria and fungi. Each of us is a complete biosystem as much of our individual bacteria cannot survive or be reproduced outside our own bodies.
the use of herbs and plants for medicinal purposes dates back centuries. It is evidence that in the Neolithic period, early humans were already well aware of the healing properties of the common plants that shared their environment. The majority of cures achieved with plants in ancient times, as a result of botanical insight, would have been discovered largely by trial and error. Before the invention of writing, the knowledge of these plants and their special properties would have been passed on for thousands of years orally, often in a ritualized religious or spiritual context. Magical practitioners would have collected from wild habitats, but also cultivated their own herb gardens. Remedies were prepared by crushing leaves, roots or flowers, and mixing the paste with liquids or fats, to either be ingested or applied topically to the body. An increase in the political power, and therefore confidence, of the Christian Church by the late Middle Ages saw an expedient rush to prosecute healers and herbalists, condemning and outlawing all forms of unauthorised healing. Sin, eating, was a practice still in existence in 19th century England, with some similar rituals also in use in Scotland and Wales. At the time, if someone had died with their shoes on, for example, having a fatal heart attack whilst tilling a field, it was assumed they had died with all their sins upon them. To avoid the logical Christian outcome of dying before repenting, one of damnation, the family would employ a sin eater. A man or woman typically of impoverished means, who would take bread and wine which was handed to them across the deceased's coffin, ingesting them and therefore transferring the sin to their own body. Epigenetics usually refers to chemical changes that affect gene expression without altering the DNA code. Epigenetic studies have shown that changes in an organism's external environment, its life experiences, can influence the expression of its otherwise inflexible DNA code. In 2014, two scientists were able to test and prove that mice inherit specific smell memories from their fathers. They did this by prolonged periods of pairing a specific odour with a mild shock in the mouse's foot. Allowing these mice to breed, they then observed a startle response in their offspring when exposed to the odour, despite never experiencing that smell before or having met their father. What's more, their grandchildren were born with the same specific smell memory and response. Each living thing remakes the world through seasonal pulses of growth, lifetime reproductive patterns, and geographies of expansion. Within a given species, too, there are multiple time-making projects as organisms enlist each other and coordinate in making landscapes. <laughs> 